one feature that we really want to talk about today is Ignition UDTs, because they're an important part of building that unified namespace. And what are UDTs? Well, UDTs stands for user-defined types. Um, they're also known as complex tags. And so when you're collecting data from equipment that comes in as tags, and you could just have a flat structure or even just a folder structure to represent all of this data as tags inside Ignition. But to follow an object-oriented approach, uh, a better way is to make parameterized data templates or a data model. And so what that looks like is you, you take all the tags that are coming and you define some real world structures, right? So I've got data coming in as a, um, a certain type of object. And every time I have a real world instance of that object, I wanna represent that data in the same way. And so when you use a UDT, uh, these instances can be based on a definition and automatically inherit any change that you make to that definition. And uh, yeah, Arlen, you wanna kind of show an example of that here? Sure. So again, let, let's remember, we were talking about before we, we manage tags. And so I've got an example here of a very <laughs> complex piece of equipment. It's a, an Emerson Flowboss 107 flow computer. And, you know, in, in the, the old way, you know, we would have gotten these tag names directly from the flow computer on the left. And those show you, hey, that's all the information I need to configure a meter. Or if I'm an IT, you know, how is that meter configured? Well, as you can tell, that is cryptic at best. So what we show here is taking all of that information and then by using an ignition UDT on the right side, you can see that we've kind of got our, we've, we've got our UNS here. We're going, okay, well, this is my rock EFM group and I'm at my Kansas City rock edge and there happens to be a Flowboss 107 there. And then under that, I've got the meter configuration and I've got the highlighted in blue, I've got a Flowboss 107 meter config V2. And I've taken these, these tags with the UDT, I took these tags and mapped them into a UDT structure. So now I've got this folder called advanced and underneath that, I've got humanly understandable tag names that we are assigning to those process variables that we're getting out of the flow computer. Now, the other thing I wanna mention here is that UDTs also give us the ability to start cleaning up even more of that tribal knowledge. So you'll notice here that there is an Orphis material enumeration. It's an integer and it has a value of zero. Okay, so imagine you're, you know, you're in an enterprise and you're, you're sending this up to IT and you go, oh, well, the Orphis material is zero. Well, what does that mean? So with an expression tag inside of our UDT, you can see that we've taken that and we've created a string tag and again, we're trying to make this friendly and we're, we put in there, hey, it's amorphous material is stainless steel. And so for a lot of these tags, we, we're taking what's very nebulous enumeration. And I, I'm sure everybody on this call knows all kinds of enumerations that we're getting out of PLCs and sensors and all of this. And this is our opportunity using unified namespace and using UDTs to make this into something that now, you know, I'm not a flow computer expert, but at least I can look at this and say, okay, atmospheric pressure, you know, here's my flowing alarm, here's my gravitational acceleration, it's an, a number that I can enter. So we've taken a very cryptic, complex set of registers and by using UDT, clean them up and now, we can use this UDT again and again and again, so that really no matter what brand of flow computer we're connected to, what the enterprise sees is that, that UNS model, if you will. We are getting a lot of questions uh, in the chat here. Are we, yeah, let's, let's answer a couple of these real quick. So one question here, Bill sent in, would all values in a UDT be published on any change? Is there a way, the meter config is not sent with process date. Yes, Good so question. everything, yeah, every, everything within, so 
uh, if everybody's familiar with how uh, ignition works and how MQTT works, so MQTT sets on top of our our transmission module sits on top of the tag structure within ignition, and MQTT is notified anytime a value changes. So initially. For the UDT example that I've got uh, on that you can see on the screen right now, that is all. All of those process variables and configuration parameters are published with the berth. But then after that, as you can tell, a lot of that is configuration data. After that, only the values within the UDT that change are published. So you've got your single source of truth. You've got your UDT instance. Now it's an asset, right? It's an instance of a UDT and you've got all of your real-time information, but then within your MQTT session, only the values that changed are updated. So again, a, a huge reduction in the overall bandwidth consumption. Perfect, yeah. And uh, somebody asked, what's the best way to handle history and alarming when using UDTs? Well, within Ignition, you can define history and alarms on the definitions and all your instances will uh, just inherit those properties. Also, those can all be parameterized. So uh, you could pass in parameters for which database you want the history going to, which alarm journal you want to log data to, um, you know, what, you know, custom set points are going to be. But within an MQTT architecture, you can certainly go deeper into where, you know, history and alarms get defined, if that's at the edge of network, if that's centrally, all that kind of stuff. So, Let's talk about how Ignition UDTs fit when building a unified namespace. Well, thanks to the flexibility of the Ignition platform, uh, you can customize your data standards and it has additional functionality for building a unified namespace like reference tags and derived tags, for example. This kind of calls back to what Arlen was talking about of cleaning up your data, adding context to your data. So rather than just taking the raw values that are coming uh, from your devices, uh, you can go and augment that data and uh, restructure it. And that can also be valuable where, you know, we can't always guarantee that the standardization is happening at the PLC level or the device level, but being able to have reference tags to restructure that data into your standardized format allows it so that as you publish the data up to your UNS, that now it's in a standard structure. And so you can do some uh, aliasing and things like that as needed. And so with Ignition, you'll create nested directories and then you can map all those into an MQT, MQTT topic structure um, is really kind of what we're getting at here. You define all the tags inside Ignition. Once you've got the structure the way you want it, it's ready for MQTT and for Sparkplug. Arlen, I'll turn it over to you to talk about MQTT and Sparkplug. All right, great. Thanks, Kent. And I, but I will go back just a second on that. We, we are trying, I will uh, back up what Kent said in uh, getting UDTs published in or, you know, published into the Ignition Exchange. And we're, we're trying not, because there are standards out there and we all know that in our world standards, you have a lot of standards to pick from, but this would let you start with say like an OPC UA, a companion spec or a uh, something like MT Connect. But everybody that I talk to goes, Arlen, we, we love the notion of that standard, but that's not the way we do it. So I think what we're getting to the point here is that we can start getting some UDTs up into the Ignition Exchange that people can start with. They can look at it and go, okay, well, 80% of that I like, but 20% I need to change. And the beauty of Ignition and UDTs is you can change that. So I just wanted to mention that. So now we've got, you know, in Ignition, we've got our great you know, set of tools to be able to manage our tags. We've got our tag browser, we can set up folders, we can set up UDTs, and now we can start taking advantage of that and, and pushing that into a communications architecture that everybody can use, and that's MQTT. So that is a publish and subscribe protocol that lets edge of network devices publish information into a broker. So if I'm an edge device, I can have my spark plug implementation start publishing information into an MQTT infrastructure, not really caring who subscribes to it. So that lets us do the decoupling, if you will. Now, again, as we mentioned before, the great thing about MQTT is you can publish anything you want on any topic. The problem is you can publish anything you want on any topic. 
So that's why we came up with Sparkplug. And Sparkplug was started about four or five years ago, initially by SiriusLink, but we contributed all of that to the Eclipse Software Foundation. They have all of the IP now. And Sparkplug is just, it doesn't break MQTT in any way. It's just a open source specification that says, if you're gonna use MQTT and you wanna do something like a unified namespace, this is probably a very good place to start. So in applying MQTT and Sparkplug, they, they, it really kind of like leveraged in, if you will, great with, with this whole concept of the UNS. So first of all, it's lightweight. It's, an, it, it's very well known. Uh, there's a lot of implementations of MQTT brokers, clients out there that, that are available today. Everything's reported by exception. So, you know, in a lot of our world, you know, people, it, I always say bandwidth is neither free nor is it unlimited. We, no matter how much bandwidth we get, we seem to always be able to use it all up. But it is very efficient and it's very secure. So the security model of MQTT and the fact that it's a remote originated connection that and then you get to apply your latest TCP IP security standards to that. That means that MQTT will always be, be able to follow the latest security because it sets on top of TCP. So long story short is that building on MQTT and Sparkplug is really one of the most common US arc, UNS architectures we see out there. Now, again, continuing on there is that we're with MQTT, we're decoupling our devices from applications. So we can have OEM sensors, we can have ignition gateways, we can have ignition edge, and those all can publish into an infrastructure where other things can subscribe to it. So just like we do in, in web services or whatever, is that we've decoupled any particular implementation from other applications that can consume that. MQTT helps everybody work together. So our devices, machine, equipment publishes information to a centralized server. And then Sparkplug provides the context and the data modeling that we need. So as Kent was going through the UDTs, a UDT within Sparkplug is called a template definition. And what that lets us do is publish models from the edge. So we're establishing a single source of truth of the model, the instance of the model. So if we have a, a motor UDT, then we have 10 motors. We're gonna publish those as you know motor one through 10, but we're always gonna be able to reference back to that model that we built with the UDT. So what that kind of looks like at the end of the day is that you've got this unified namespace where as we start getting more adoption in this, We've got our edge IO, our, our applications like ignition, edge controllers, our MES systems, historians, ERP, all can publish and subscribe into a namespace that we can all agree on. Now, again, we could go with the, with the ISA 95 model, we could go with whatever your enterprise, and we're gonna show you here how this starts layering in to some of the cloud services that are becoming available so that once we have a unified namespace at the ignition platform, we can start leveraging that. So we could argue here that the whole, you know, if you're just on-prem with your ignition gateway and you're not going outside of that, then you're probably good. You probably don't need a unified namespace. You know what you did, you got all your tags mapped in, you're good to go. But the minute, you want to take that information out of ignition and start leveraging it in other places. That's where the real power of applying unified namespace comes from. So if we look at this architectural drawing, on the left, that's where we have our brownfield equipment, our sensors, everything like that. And then we use ignition, ignition edge, some of the OEM equipment like uh, Opto 22 or Signal Fire or WAGO PLCs or Phoenix Contact that does spark plug. And we're starting to publish that, that spark plug information, single source of truth into an MQTT infrastructure. From there in the center, we show Ignition as our, basically our connection platform. That's where we leverage the tools in Ignition to start making this 
into a unified namespace that then we can take on up to the enterprise. Now, what I show here is that we are leveraging UNS and Sparkplug with our IoT bridge products for the Azure Digital Twin, ADT, for AWS SiteWise Digital Twin, and the newest one we've just added is the Snowflake Manufacturing Cloud.